Hello, hello. Today I wanted to talk about the four components that you need for a successful R1 application. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this today is that we are entering into the summer months and you might be the type of person who says, I'm going to write an R01 this summer. And that is the end of it. There's no sort of plan or structure that is attached to that. And so I wanted to talk about that a little bit today and talk about what is actually required to be successful and some of the areas where I see folks getting stuck. So before we do that, I'm just going to introduce myself in case you're new here. So I'm Sarah Dobson. I am a research grant consultant and academic career coach, and I help early career researchers write clear and compelling and persuasive applications to NIH. So let's talk today about what those key components of a successful R01 actually are. And I think you might be surprised at, um, at what I consider to be the core components. So what I'm going to do is walk through each of the components and talk about where I see what I call uh, a hand waving problem. So, and what I mean by that is literally you just, you know, you sort of wave your hands and, and there's some nebulousness or um, vagueness associated with a particular piece. And that in, in every aspect of grant writing can be, uh, can be a big problem, okay? So the very first component that you need for a strong R01 is strategy. You need an application strategy. You need a success strategy, okay? If you just start writing, <laughs> um, you could end up in all sorts of trouble. And the reason for that is that you want to make sure that you are maximizing your time, first of all, um, so that you are putting together an application that actually has a chance of getting funded. So a success strategy at its very basic level ensures that you're not wasting your own time submitting an application that is ineligible for the competition that you're submitting to, right? I mean, that is the worst case scenario is submitting an application that you're not even eligible for and having spent all of this time and energy um, and dropped a bunch of other stuff to, to put in an application that has zero chance of success, right? So at the very basic level, your success strategy helps you avoid wasting your own time. But of course, tied to that is the importance of a, a strategy that allows you to infuse excellence throughout your application, right? And really make a connection with your reviewers and get them excited about what you are proposing to do. And if you don't sort of think about that in advance in, in all of the ways that you can make those connections with your reviewers and ensure that it, it gets in front of the, the right reviewers in the first place. Um, you're, you're missing an opportunity to, um, to enhance the competitiveness of your application, right? And, and that's really sort of the bottom line of the success strategy is how to put yourself in the most competitive position. There are all sorts of components to that, as we've just talked about. Obviously, you know, eligibility <laughs> is a huge one. Um, you know, audience is another one. But but again, other other pieces like the team that you have around you um, and, and how you position yourself as PI are also really important components of that success strategy, right? So that's the very first key component that you need for a successful R01 is a success strategy. The second key component is a plan, right? You, again, if you just wave your hands and say, well, I'm going to write this R01 this summer, for example, without actually laying out how and when you're going to do that, you'll end up getting through the majority of the summer without having accomplished all that much. Or even if you are able to get some writing done, 
it's very likely that it will feel scattered and disorganized and and all over the place, right? So having having a plan for when and how you're going to get this this massive grant writing project completed is another key component to your success. And not just the success of the grant itself, but your own personal success in avoiding burnout and um, neglecting the other things that are on your plate at the same time, right? So it is absolutely essential that you create some sort of plan that will allow you to get this done in a way that feels manageable and sustainable um, with, with whatever amount of time that you have, right? So that is number two. Number three is an argument, right? And, <laughs> and this also, maybe, maybe it seems obvious uh, to you, but having, having an argument for the, the value of your project the strength of your team and the feasibility of your research is, again, a crucial component to the success of your application. And I think of that really as the implicit scoring criteria, right? We have the explicit scoring criteria, which are, you know, the, the NIH scoring criteria around uh, significance, investigator, innovation, uh, approach, uh, environment, et cetera, et cetera, right? Those ones uh, are, are, are published. We know what they are. But implicitly, we also know that reviewers are looking sort of globally at three basic areas. Is this research worth doing? Is this team the right team to be doing this work? Can we trust them to do this work? And is this project feasible as described, both you know, logistically within the time and a budget available, but also you know, scientifically, is it, is it feasible, right? So you need to build an argument that touches on those three things and also touches on those explicit scoring criteria that the reviewers are examining when they read your application, right? So again, having that key component in place requires that you that you think deeply about what those elements are and that you and that you put a, a strategy and a plan together to be able to to convey that properly, right? So it, it, you know, the, the, the other two key components, right, strategy and planning ties into that third component around what your argument actually is, giving yourself the time and the space to do that deep thinking that's required to come up with that, uh, that really strong argument and justification for um, why your research needs to be done, why your team is, uh, is, can be trusted to do the work, and uh, why your project is feasible. Okay, so the fourth component of a successful R01 is feedback, right? You don't ever, 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 ever want to submit an R01 without having somebody else look at it first. I'm sure you can imagine what the advantages of feedback are, but at, you know, at the most basic level, um, feedback is a, a sounding board for, for your ideas, and it allows you to get a sense of what other people see when they read your work, right? Because if you are the, the only one looking at it, you, um, you familiarize yourself with what you've written in a way that can, um, that can mean that you, that you miss things or you overlook things when, when you are reading. But as soon as you hand that over to somebody else to look at, they, they will have their own experience of reading it and their own interpretation of what they're reading. And it's really important for you to understand what, another person's interpretation of your writing is so that you can figure out how to communicate more clearly, right? But the other thing that happens, or I would say one of the, one of the challenges that happens around getting feedback from your colleagues on on your application is that, you know, most people are really busy, right? Most people don't have a lot of time to invest in looking really closely at your 
application. And so again, this is where those earlier um, key components of grant writing success come in. Because if you are able to let people know well enough in advance that you are requesting their feedback, if you give them something specific to focus on when they are giving you that feedback, that will allow you to get the feedback that is going to be most useful to you, right? Instead of saying, again, in that sort of hand wave way, um, can you just take a look at this, right? If you're not giving people any sort of direction or focus in, uh, in the feedback that you're requesting, you can get all sorts of different things that are not useful to you at all. Believe me, uh, I'm explaining this because I have been there. I'm, I've learned from experience uh, how, to, how to ask for good feedback. And so if you just take that sort of hand wavy approach and say, well, can you just take a look at this? Tell me what you think. Um, that is not going to necessarily get you the feedback that you're looking for. So again, it takes, it takes planning, it takes structure, it takes focus for you to be able to, uh, to solicit that in advance and, and solicit something specific from, from the people that you're seeking feedback from, right? So all of those together are absolutely crucial components to a successful application. So let's recap again what those are. First, we have strategy. And when we think of sort of hand wavy strategy, it's, oh, yeah, you know, we will get this into the right hands. I'm sure I'm eligible. Um, you don't have a success strategy. You just start writing. That's the sort of hand wavy approach. And the, the focus directed approach is to create a strategy for how you're going to position yourself and your team and your project to be as competitive as possible. Okay, the next key component for R01 success is planning. And again, the hand wavy way to plan is to not really have a plan, to just go ahead and write. Um, and the directed and focused uh, approach to planning is to map it all out, right? To create a project management plan to write your R01 in a very you know, delineated time period. The third key component of a successful R01 is an argument. And the hand wavy approach to the argument would be really lacking detail. So for example, in your innovation section, you would say, this is innovative without really explaining how or why it's innovative, right? That's just one small example of a lack of detail, a lack of justification, and a sort of a hand wavy approach to your argument for why your research ought to be done, why you have the right team in place to do it, and why your project is feasible. OK, the non hand wavy approach is to have uh, to, to use rhetorical frameworks and techniques to really connect with your reviewers and make it clear what your uh, what your argument is and really, really persuade your reviewers on those key points. Finally, the last key component to a successful R1 is feedback. This is an absolutely crucial piece, of course. Uh, and the hand wavy approach to feedback is to say, hey, can you take a look at this without um, giving anyone advance notice or providing any sort of guidance on what it is that you're looking for. So the, the focused uh, and direct approach to feedback is to, is to let someone know well in advance when they can expect to see your draft and what exactly you're asking them to to look for in the draft and give you feedback on. So there you have it. That is the four components of a successful application. Um, there are a couple of things that you can do at this point if you found this video helpful. The first one is to download our grant planning workbook that will help you uh, with the, the planning component and actually some of the strategy component um, of, of mapping out your grant writing over the summer. So there's a link in the video description. You can download that right away. The other thing you can do if you want more support as you are writing your R01 this summer, 
summer or anytime you watch this video, uh, we do have a an R01 grant writing course. It's a self-paced course called the Grant Funding Formula. And that is available for you to uh, register and get started whenever you're ready. Uh, there is a, um, uh, a, a bonus available for you now if you would like to register before April 30th, 2022. We have a bonus package available that is going to help you uh, get your grant out the door uh, at the end of the summer and really support you to write the best possible application you can. So all of the details for that can be found on the registration page. The link for that is also in the video description. So please check it out. And uh, if you do want that step-by-step -step guided support for writing an R01, uh, I invite you to register for the program.